purely speculative, but obviously it's also possible that nonviolence would not have worked and honest people will say, whatever the loss is, it is true that violent resistance did defeat the Axis powers. However, in the specific case of Israel and Palestine, I think it can work. Why? Take the last seven years, what's called the Second Intifada. Palestinians, approximately 5,000 Palestinians were killed during the Second Intifada, 1,000 of them children. On the Israeli side, 1,000 killed, about 160 children. Honest people doing their reckoning, I think, would say, for all the death, for all the bloodletting, Palestinians at the end of eight years have very little to show for it, apart from the dubious value of Israel's redeployment in Gaza. Uh, it's arguable, it's arguable that had they used nonviolent civil resistance, the balance sheet would have been much better. Some people say, but wait, didn't Palestinians use nonviolent civil resistance during the first Intifada, 1987 to 1993? And isn't it true that they have nothing to show for it at the end? I think half is true, half is not. The first Intifada was overwhelmingly nonviolent on the Palestinian side, overwhelmingly brutal and bloodthirsty on the Israeli side. Um, there's no question about that. I, as a personal matter, I lived uh, in the occupied territories during the first Intifada. The first couple of years, the most violence you saw were eight-year-old kids throwing stones from makeshift barricades at Israeli soldiers who were so far down the street that the stones never even reached them. It was purely symbolic, uh, and that was the maximum violence during the first couple of years, 88 and 89. Uh, that part is true. I don't think it's true that they had nothing to show for it. Uh, the Israeli army was thrown into disarray by the first intifada. Israel suffered a major public relations disaster. And it's quite possible that had it gone on longer and had it not been subverted by the Palestinian leadership, it's possible, you can say for certain, it would have succeeded or had more success than it did in the end. Why do I think it might work today? Well, that brings us back to my beginning, my introductory remarks. Namely, as I said, the crucial condition, the crucial condition for the success of the Gandhian uh, cr uh, program is there has to be a consensus in public opinion that what the Palestinians want is legitimate, it's reasonable, it's moral, it's legal. And as I pointed out in the earlier remarks, there is now a consensus in the international com uh, community. The Palestinian demands an end to the occupation, a reasonable resolution of the refugee question, those demands have now been sanctioned as reasonable by the whole of the international community. The challenge now is people know what the Palestinians demand is reasonable or enlightened public opinion. The International Court of Justice, human rights organizations say the Palestinian demands are legal and moral. The challenge now is inform the public. The Palestinians are not asking for the sun, the moon, and the skies. They're simply asking for what the International Court of Justice says they're entitled to. They're simply asking what Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch says they are entitled to. They're simply asking what the General Assembly says each year they're entitled to. And so the challenge now is twofold. On the Palestinian side, for them to engage in a form of nonviolent civil resistance, which rivets international attention 
on the injustices that unfold on a daily basis in the occupied territories. And the challenge for us, the challenge for all of us, is to inform public opinion. These demands are not unreasonable. They carry the legitimacy of the most respected and representative political and judicial bodies and human rights bodies in the world today. Here, I think we can learn important lessons from the Zionist movement, because the Zionist movement understood from its inception that a crucial ingredient, a component of the strategy to win statehood, a crucial a component is public opinion. How do you win public opinion? The Zionists were very clear. You win it by waiving, publicizing your certificates of legitimacy. Those certificates which show your demands are reasonable. What does that mean concretely? If I were to ask this audience, which seems to be at least some level representative, how many of you have heard of the Balfour Declaration? Raise your hand. OK, you could say about half, uh, about half raise their hand. Why do you know the Balfour Declaration? How many of you know, have heard of the 1947 UN Partition Resolution, which said that a Jewish and an Arab state should be formed in Palestine? Raise your hand. OK, again, about half, maybe slightly more than half. Why do you know that? The Balfour Declaration was issued 90 years ago. It was all of one sentence, albeit with many subclauses, but one sentence issued by an obscure British foreign minister nearly a century ago. But nearly half of you know it. The partition resolution was one of thousands of UN resolutions that have been issued that one 60 years ago. You know it because the Zionist movement made sure you knew it. They knew this was an important certificate of legitimacy to win public opinion. Abba Eben, Israel's formidable, loquacious foreign minister, he once called the partition resolution Israel's birth certificate. And that's exactly right. It certified that Israel was not a bastard child of the international system, but a legitimate offspring. And that's what gave Israel its moral or morally irrevocable title. The, the contrast couldn't be more striking. Now, we're not talking about 90 years ago or 60 years ago. How many of you are aware that every single year the United Nations General Assembly issues another birth certificate for the state of Palestine? How many of you know that? Not a terrific showing. How many of you know that in 2004, the, high, the most respected judicial body in the world on every relevant question delivered a resounding defeat to Israel and a resounding affirmation to the Palestinians. How many of you know that? Well, look around you. And that's the tragedy that these crucial victories have been squandered because nobody knows about them. You take a practical example. In the ICE, the International Court advisory opinion, it said the wall that Israel is building in the occupied West Bank is illegal under international law. It must be dismantled. That's what the court said. It's illegal. It must be dismantled. If several hundred thousand Palestinians armed with a pick in one hand and the ICJ opinion in the other hand, marched on the wall and started to knock it down. Why are they knocking it down? Well, they're knocking it 